of South Africa. I now give the floor to His Excellency Roberto Alvarez Gil, Minister for Foreign Affairs of the Dominican Republic. Excelentísimo Señor. Your Excellency, Mr. Shaba Kereshi, President of the 77th Session of the General Assembly of the United Nations, Your Excellency, Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, Excellencies, Ministers of Foreign Affairs, Heads of Delegation, Ladies and Gentlemen, I begin my address by conveying to you the apologies of our President, Luis Abinader who, for due to unexpected circumstances caused by Hurricane Fiona that has severely affected several provinces of our country, is unable to participate in this important general debate. Now, I cannot continue my address without first conveying our condolences to the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, I must also extend these condolences to the members and observers of the Commonwealth of Nations following the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Her example of dedication to public service will be remembered forevermore. After a painful period which produced millions of victims, we meet once again in this illustrious hall because, thanks to science, we have overcome the worst effects of COVID-19. But who would have foretold that in the middle of the 21st century, the specter of war would once again devastate Europe? This has been a bitter ordeal and let us hope that we learn the lessons we've been taught so that we can be better prepared for the challenges of the future. We're talking here about situations that could have been avoided if we had been inclined to work together to find answers to the pressing problems facing humankind. We should be absolutely clear on that point by now, because in a globalised world, the effects of, the ep of epidemics, conflicts and violence know no borders. Precisely because our world is so interconnected, Long-term goals and major goals require always, as it was, is so eloquently expressed by the title of this General Assembly session, transformative solutions to interlocking challenges. It is crucial to recognize that this organization requires significant reforms, which reforms which will rouse it from the complacency that has colored its work. We should underscore that what is important for our countries is the consolidation of a renewed multilateralism. As part of a substantive reform process, we must grant greater authority and a greater role to the General Assembly. And this in order to reduce cases of the abusive use of the veto in the Security Council. This is particularly important when it comes to issues involving the violation of human rights, and support for humanitarian assistance. Another pressing issue is climate change and its devastating effects, which mean that we need to have the principle of active solidarity to enter into full force. This solidarity must be shown towards those least able to tackle climate change effectively. As an island, our country is ready to make tangible proposals within the annual conference of the parties to the UNFCCC COP27. Naturally, our positions are fully aligned with those of small island developing states. And these positions demand that those countries that most contribute to global warming retain in their agendas a vital mechanism for cooperation with those who most acutely suffer the effects of climate change. As such, we hope to see greater commitment to financing for adaptation and mitigation in the face of this crisis. Mr. President, 
small countries such as ours are significantly increasing their education programs and in so doing they're sacrificing work in other areas crucial for development for this reason we attach particular importance to the sum the transforming education summit just as we do to the creation of the UN youth office and for the mobilization day in our country youth accounts for 70% of our population. We believe in their significant, full and equal participation in decision-making processes. Today, humankind requires results which work in favour of peace and avoid new conflicts. It requires particularly that we avoid those conflicts which jeopardise the very existence of planet Earth. For this reason, the Dominican Republic supports the total elimination of nuclear weapons and as proof of this stance we will tomorrow be depositing our instrument of ratification for the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. As part of this process by which we continue our commitment to multilateralism and as we seek to step up our presence in international bodies our country is now a candidate for election to the UN Human Rights Council for 2024-2026. It is our legitimate aspiration to sit on this council for the first time. And as we pursue this goal, we hope to enjoy the support of this community of nations. Ladies and gentlemen, the 21st century has brought with it many positive developments for the improvement of the quality of life for all of humankind. However, unfortunately, events such as the invasion of Ukraine by the Russian Federation have created not only a, a, a thrown rather people into disarray following the loss of human lives, but these events have also seen hunger worsen dangerously in many regions, many of which are far removed from the site of the conflict. Given that Russia and Ukraine are the primary producers at a global level of grain and fertilizers, this conflict has imperiled the global distribution of this important food source, not to mention the extent to which Europe has been affected by fuel shortages, fuel of which Russia is one of the primary suppliers. Mr. President, we welcome the fact that the Security Council extended the mandate of the UN Integrated Office in Haiti until July 2023. And we welcome the fact that this office includes a unit to tackle sexual and gender-based violence, one of the most aberrant products of this climate of violence. The outcomes expected of BINU are conditional upon the Haitian people reaching a national agreement as a starting point to combat and ultimately neutralize gangs, first of all, and then the Haitian people must hold elections as soon as circumstances allow. Unfortunately, these developments have not come to pass, and as such, the Dominican Republic believes that efforts to stabilize Haiti must be focused, and we've made this point time and time again, on bringing about peace immediately and on political dialogue as the only appropriate ways to tackle violence and chaos. As has been stated by the Special Representative of the Secretary General for Haiti, I wish to reiterate that Criminal gangs have increased their power to suffocate the people of Port-au-Prince and everything points to the fact that the Haitian National Peace, uh, Police rather, are not able to curb these gangs. It is incumbent upon the Haitian authorities to control and put an end to the activities of gangs that are perpetrating crimes so atrocious that they could be classified as crimes against humanity. We must remove the blindfolds from our eyes and admit that the Haitian National Police alone will not develop sufficient capacity to guarantee order and neutralize the gangs. To 
implement the aforementioned necessary process, Resolution 2645 of the Security Council puts us in a position to take the decisions most appropriate to avoid the situation in Haiti spiralling out of all control. The operative paragraphs of that resolution become particularly relevant against this backdrop and consequently I wish to underscore the following points. 1. There is a need to prohibit without any delay whatsoever the transfer and illicit trafficking of small arms, light weapons and munitions to any party who participates or supports acts of gang violence, criminal activity or human rights abuses in Haiti. Secondly, it is important to adopt appropriate measures which may include asset freezes or travel bans on those who participate in, f in fueling the violence and terror which prevails in Haiti and affects the region as a whole. Thirdly, we must see the adoption with the appropriate urgency of actions which the Secretary General will outline so that as stipulated in paragraph 10 of the aforementioned re resolution it is, it is possible and I quote to enhance support, security support for the Haitian National Police's efforts to combat high levels of gang violence. Four, all parties involved must reach an urgent political agreement spearheaded by the Haitian people. An agreement with a view to organizing legislative and presidential elections with the full participation of all the Haitian people and in particular the participation of women, young people and civil society. In this vein, we believe it is important to firmly support what was said by the Secretary General Antonio Guterres in his interview on French television on the 18th of September. He said it was vital to deal with security in Haiti and he said that un until assistance to police capacity building is strengthened, there needs to be a robust force in place, a force able to restore peace and put an end to the violence that has been unleashed by armed gangs which themselves are inf infiltrated by political and economic spheres of influence. Ladies and gentlemen, on several occasions we have asked the following question. What has been the greater tragedy for the Haitian people. Was it the 2010 earthquake which devastated Port-au-Prince and claimed the lives of some 220,000 people including of 102 members of United Nations personnel? Or is it the current situation which can be defined as a low intensity conflict? The answer, and here I have no doubt whatsoever, is that despite the tragic suffering caused by the earthquake, the current situation is more desperate for the Haitian people. In 2010, following the earthquake, the entire Haitian population united and driven by a sense of solidarity mobilized to support and rescue their neighbors. Moreover, the entire world mobilized and came to Haiti's aid. Of course, the Dominican people immediately answered the call for aid. They rallied to bring necessary aid and assistance to their Haitian brothers. But this wasn't just the case in the face of natural disasters. In 1986 too, civic responsibility prevailed and all of the Haitian people united to halt the dictatorship which lasted for more than two decades. In other words, the Haitian people has, many, has a great deal of experience garnered over history of uniting and facing adversity. Today, the situation is dramatically different. Faced with the powerlessness of authorities when it comes to establishing order and guaranteeing citizen security, the resilient Haitian people now feel abandoned to their own fate and fear is gripping, indeed paralyzing, vast swathes of the population. Violence has produced deep splits within society and now the social fabric is in such a state as to not allow any type of cohesion. 
Haitian people wait in despair as they wait for the aid of the international community. As President Abinader said last year at this rostrum, Haiti can wait no longer. We must act with a sense of responsibility and we must act now. The Dominican Republic reiterates its belief that the only lasting and sustainable response to the Haitian crisis must come from the Haitian people. In spite of the difficulties in reaching agreements, we hope that we will find agreements and we hope that the right path will be chosen so that the Haitian people can achieve the consensus necessary to get out of such a grave situation. To reach this goal, international cooperation is vital. If we wish to bring stability and calm to the people of Haiti, to their neighbors and to the region, that is our sole agenda. Distinguished delegates, the Dominican Republic signed the United Nations Charter in 1945 and continues to uphold its commitment with the same sense of responsibility with which it signed the Charter 77 years ago. We have participated in historic decisions and resolutions issued by this General Assembly. You can rest assured that our country will continue to play its part in this concert of nations and that it will be ready to continue contributing to the strengthening of the United Nations, an instrument which remains decisive in the maintenance of global peace and security. Thank you very much. I thank the Minister for Foreign Affairs of the Dominican Republic.